Hi, I'm Nigel Grizzard. I'm a, a Jewish historian. I'm very interested in the history of Jews in uh, West Yorkshire. I'm also an MBA student at the University of Huddersfield. And that's how I got interested in the whole topic of Jews in Huddersfield. I think today's is the first ever tour of uh, the history of the Jews of Huddersfield. It's to tell people about the Jewish community that was in Huddersfield, its story, but also to learn from the participants to see what they can tell me about the topic. Because everyone tells me something when I run one of these tours. Well, we're standing here by Huddersfield Station, and it's a very good place to start, because uh, if you can look over there, you'll see the station. The station, I think, was the place where Jews first came to the town. Uh, I met a guy, a guy's daughter, called Ruth, and she told me that her father, Antonin Haas, his, he came to the town as a refugee in 1939. He writes in his biography about coming to the town, town, about being a magnificent station, but he finds that at five in the morning he can't get any coffee there. And he was very, very disappointed. So we start opposite the station. We've also got the statue of Harold Wilson there, where we talk about Harold Wilson, his links with Lord Kagan. And then there's rugby league, and we talk about Albert Eyre and Rosenfeld, who came from uh, Australia, from New South Wales, to play rugby league elite for, for Huddersfield. Well, the politics is Harold Wilson, the textiles was Lord Kagan's, and the fact is that Huddersfield was a textile town. And in these textile towns, they needed services. Jews came here as jewelers, traveling jewelers to work with people. People also came here as doctors, they came here as dentists. They were involved in the life of the town. But I thought that textiles summed up Lord Kagan, together with politics, and I thought rugby league summed up uh, Albert Ayer and Rosenfeld. We're here today by the statue of Harold Wilson. I wanted to point out to you three interesting places that we find within the, uh, the area of the station. First, there's Harold Wilson. I'm old enough, as I think some of you are, to remember Harold Wilson getting into power in 1964. It was a very interesting time when he defeated Sir Alec Douglas Hume, who was the leader of the Tories. But why are we interested in Harold Wilson, and why did I call the tour Politics, Textiles and Rugby League? When Harold Wilson resigned in 1976, <coughs> in his resignation honours, it was known as the Lavender List. <coughs> and it was rumoured that Marcia Falkender, or Lady Falkender, Harold's chief of staff, had written all the had written the honours. And among the honours were a number of Jews. Well, I think they're really interesting because um, when you go on the Jewish Heritage Trail, you're actually um, looking at the spiritual and physical heritage of the, of the towns and cities of this nation. And that's where the where we have the root the roots of our faith in this nation from a long time ago. Right, question for a blue bag. What was founded here? Rugby League. Rugby League. Oh, yeah. Rugby League was founded here. Rugby League was founded. And the George Hotel has closed down about two years ago and is being renovated, but very slowly. In the museum of the George Hotel was, is, a fabulous Rugby League museum. And among the people that came to Huddersfield was a man called Albert Aaron Rosenfeld, who came from New South Wales who came to Huddersfield on a tour. He was born in 1885. He arrives in Huddersfield about 1908, and he falls in love with a lady in the town. And he then goes on to play from 1909 to 1921 for Huddersfield, 1921 to 1923 for Wakefield Trinity, and from 1923 to 1924 for Bradford Northern. Yeah, there, there was a small Jewish community in, in Huddersfield, obviously, and uh... A lot of them, it seems to be a top-down history. A lot of them very prominent people that have achieved quite a lot in their professional uh, life. Uh, fr starting from uh, owners of cinemas to, uh, m to mill owners and other people. So that's, that was one aspect of the Jewish history. And I, I would like to learn more about the actual, uh, maybe people who weren't as prominent. Uh, so maybe that, that will be a sequel in the future. This is the Empire Cinema. The manager of the Empire Cinema who lived in Huddersfield was a man called Marx Friedman. He had a sire who was a private in the Duke of Wellington's regiment, the Duke of Wellington's riding regiment. And Meyer was awarded the military medal, which is a great military honor, on the 18th of September 1916 for initiative and consistent good work between the 16th and 21st of May 16, during which period he controlled and fired a mortar single-handed under trying circumstances with great skill. Yes, I, yes, I find it, yeah, I find it yeah, fascinating. Although I've lived in Huddersfield all my life, constantly finding out things that I didn't know about Huddersfield. And this, this is another 
facet of uh, the town's history that I didn't know about. So, yeah. The talk was really great. Uh, I like the fact that Huddersfield is a buzzing place, that uh, there are initiatives at the moment uh, trying to explore different aspects of Huddersfield's history, which is really rich. And I would, uh, I would recommend anybody to come and take part in the talks in the future. It's the only Jewish-owned steakhouse in West Yorkshire. It's owned by a guy who comes from Argentina, who I met in synagogue one day. And I, what was interesting was, how many of you know Storrs Hall in Huddersfield? Yes. Storrs Hall, which is a huge, uh, was a former psychiatric hospital. It was a former psychiatric hospital. It was then bought by Israelis, who turned it into a, uh, a hall of residence, who in turn sold it on to another company. Uh, the Israeli guy, Shai, who I knew, told me he always used to bring, when his Israeli friends came, they always used to go to the Botafogo for their steak dues. Um, I've learned that there are two there were two synagogues in Huddersfield, and yeah. Well, I didn't know that we had uh, that there were two synagogues in Huddersfield. Not I mean, they weren't purpose built, but buildings that were uh, that house that house the synagogue. Um, and I found the fact that the the trains uh, came from Hull through Huddersfield with a thousands of Jewish people that they all they all came came through Huddersfield. It's, uh, it's great. And there was a man called Marcus Shlomovitz, it's an interesting name that, who came from Manchester and uh, he was the representative of the Huddersfield Synagogue on the Communal Parliament, the Board of Deputies of British Jews in London. He used to come over from Huddersfield to Manchester quite often and you have to remember that in those days there was no M62 so it was a different world than the quick communications that there are today. Marcus Shlomovitz is an interesting character because he didn't like the definition of Jew as a cheat in the Oxford English Dictionary. And if you look on the internet, you find in the 1970s, he spends all his time as a campaigner against the Oxford English Dictionary, getting the definition of Jew in the dictionary to be changed. I'm interested in the, you know, the, the heritage, the Jewish heritage of the nation both in terms of the people and the, and the buildings and the lives they lived and the industry that they set up for us. So. Uh, definitely I think there should be more tours like this uh, because Huddersfield is a diverse place. It's got a lot of different communities and it's, a, it's part of so-called hidden histories and I think uh, people generally open to, as, we, as, as we've seen today, um, we had a, quite a good attendance, so I think there will be people coming to, to these tours in the future as well, and uh, I will definitely take part of it. Mourners gathered at Huddersfield Town Hall from all over the world for the funeral service <coughs> of La Lady Margaret Kagan. Family and friends travelled from countries, including the USA, Israel, Austria and Lithuania, to celebrate the life of Lady Kagan who died at her home in Redwood Drive, Bradley, on March the 31st, 2011. One by one, those that had known her paid tribute to this amazing lady in a dignified and moving ceremony presided over by civil funeral celebrant Janice Hutton. Yeah, I would consider going on other heritage trails um, concerning other towns and cities to find out more about our, our heritage. You know, spiritual and physical. Anyway, welcome to the campus. The reason I bring you here is this is going to become the site for the North Holocaust Memorial. There is a lady called Antonia Stowe. Where's Johnny? Yeah, behind you. Oh, yeah. Is your your sister-in-law? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jonathan's sister-in-law. But she was involved with Kirkley's Council for a travelling exhibition called Six Million, which was six million buttons, which tried to sum up the enormity of the Holocaust. It was a very, very successful exhibition, and it's also been successful because they're still collecting buttons to try and show how many people were murdered by the Nazis. I think it went wonderfully. We had a lot of people, lots of new people who I'd never met before, lots of new friends made, told lots of information, really, really pleased with the day. I thought the whole thing went exceptionally well. And uh, luckily the weather held off, held till just till now, when we finished the sky zone. So it was very good that we were able to walk around when it was dry. Because if it had been wet, I think it would have uh, upset me and upset a lot of other people as well. I thought it was fascinating. I think it's a, a little known side of Huddersfield, that it had a, a Jewish community, albeit a small community, but it's just another 
a sort of part of the Would cultural mix of Huddersfield. I learn things all the time. What I didn't know, what I do know now, I've got lots of people to contact and ask for other things. So next time we run the tour, we can have more stories and more updates and visit more premises. Um, I just learned, you know, the, uh, the different people, where they live, um, their lives that, that they lived and uh, what they experienced and um, the blessings that they brought to the town or the city as it now is. I'll be doing another one in Huddersfield, I would imagine, before, before the end of the summer. And I'm doing one in Bradford as well and one in Leeds. And I'm in fact going to Bradford City Hall tomorrow to see about running some more tours in Bradford. So, you know, all sorts of opportunities.